Hello and welcome back to Chapter 6 of The Mountains Are Calling, Messages Inspired by Nature. My name is Giselle Turi. Chapter 6, Run with the Deer. It was a gorgeous day for hiking and exploring. After preparing and eating a wonderful breakfast cooked out in the open air and under a big tree, we decided to go see all of the surrounding beauty. With our loyal little companion alongside, we headed upward into the more treed area. Climbing up and over hills, we would stop occasionally to catch our breath and to absorb the serenity and wonder of it all. Sometimes I felt like we were on top of the world looking down on the teepee we slept in and out as far as the eyes could see at more trees and mountains. It was fantastic. Every time we would reach the top of a hill, I would eagerly look on the other side in hopes of spying a deer or maybe a bear. The higher we hiked, the more I could feel my heart pounding. Wow, am I out of shape or what? Taking a break gave us a chance to stop and listen to the surrounding silence with only the sounds of nature sweetly dancing in our ears. Looking out over the vastness of it all was breathtaking. What a spectacular view. Sebastian was scurrying around, sniffing and checking everything out. And as I caught my breath, we continued exploring uprooted trees with the thoughts of possible pieces of gold in them bar roots. Couldn't help myself. It comes and goes. Ha! Huh. On our journey back down, Mark and I were discussing what our puppy would do if he spotted a deer. I mean, we are talking about a city dog here. As if on cue, one happened to jump out behind us. A deer with antlers, a buck. And what do you think happened? Off goes the deer, and shortly behind him, off goes Sebastian, checking out this new and exciting adventure. It must have looked like a strange-looking dog with horns, and hey, it wanted to run and play, so off he went. I can't help but wonder what's going through that dog's head sometimes. He's just like a little kid with a new play toy. Uh, about five minutes later, he was back looking for his mommy and daddy, content with his new experience. So how many times have we taken the time to run with the deer? How many times have we really allowed our spirits to soar without holding back? How many times do we suppress our innermost desires and dreams? In doing so, we suppress our immune system, which is where depression comes in. Why? Because if we continue to ignore what we are called to do in this life, we are out of alignment with our purpose. Even as adults, it is important to take the time to play and be like little children at times. Regaining our innocence and natural sense of curiosity, playfulness, and exploration is mandatory to have a joyful life. Remember the saying, all work and no play makes Jack or Jackie a dull boy or girl. Our body, thoughts, and feelings interact with each other. It is all the same, no separate entities, as some people or perhaps some doctors would have you believe. How many times have you had a real strong urge to do something totally different than what you have ever done before in your life, and it really grabs your attention? What if you did it? How would that feel? Have you ever gone up in a hot air balloon or skydive from 10,000 feet up? Going up in a hot air balloon is exhilarating, and skydiving with free falling the first 5,000 feet is awesome. What a way to let go of inhibitions. It doesn't have to be extreme, though. It can even be dancing or singing. I love to belly dance and to sing. Sometimes I share my talents along with my daughters at retirement homes. We like to entertain them and they love the attention. It is so freeing and it really makes you feel so good inside. Too many times we become so overwhelmed and feel so mentally exhausted because of the ruts we find ourselves in. When that happens, it is time to take a look at what makes you happy and do something totally new and different. 
be spontaneous. It will add a new change to your life, a charge, an absolute new exciting charge to your life, and you will feel stronger because of it. So what lights you on fire? What thrills you and puts a huge smile on your face? Too many people are in the habit of saying, life is too short. Life is what you make it. Myself, personally, I like to rephrase it by saying, life is precious. So why waste it? Life is to be experienced and enjoyed. There is always time to nurture your spirit. When one forgets to do that, then that is when we grow old. It is understandable because the body follows through with what the mind tells it. If the body thinks sadness and it's no use thoughts, then why should the body do anything else but begin to deteriorate, deteriorate, thus growing old? Being happy and following your heart, running with the deer, and letting your spirit soar is living life. Staying engulfed in unhappiness, old worn out memories, negative thoughts and feelings are moving you toward death, not life. A very slow death at that. What do you think disease and illness are? It is your body breaking down, deteriorating, and basically giving up and growing old because it doesn't have anything else better to do. Why? Because the mind keeps sending it sad and painful messages. Messages like, I'm not good enough. I can't accomplish this. I'm not loved. He, she is better than I am, etc. Everyone has their own special talent that they have to offer, even if the talent is like someone else's. Everyone has their own unique way of sharing their gift, and that makes it original. Feelings of inferiority, like someone is better than you. Who put that in your head, anyway? Possibly a ghost from the past? A teacher, parent, sibling, etc.? It doesn't matter because most people who place that head trip on you are extremely insecure themselves and it is a way of draining energy from you, thus giving them more power. The big problem here is that it is a false power and it is self-defeating. Just remember who you really are, a child of God, and you know that God doesn't create inferior stuff. You are made from the highest energy of God, and don't let anyone try to tell you that you must earn that position, because you are naturally that already. God or Goddess, all that is, higher power, universe, or whatever term feels right for you to call it, this ultimate spirit loves all of us enough to make us the very best. Please don't deny yourself, our God, Goddess, etc., of that. Remember, Know who you are and claim it. All right, let's play a game. You may have seen this in other writings, but it is well worth repeating. Okay, so you want to get a piece of paper and a pen. And for a moment, after you just close your eyes and really fire up your imagination, then start making a list of all the things that you would love to do. So let me put it to you this way. If there was nothing stopping you, no obstacle, no money concerns, time concerns, age, whatever, no obstacles at all, and you could accomplish anything, what would you love to do? Write that down. Listen to your heart, and as you begin to write things down, pay attention to how it makes you feel. Are you starting to feel excited about the possibilities of it all? If you are feeling sadness, then you need to look at your perception of what you were writing down. Pay attention to your thoughts as well. Are you getting messages like, wow, I can do this? Or are they something like, I feel sad because I will never be able to do this? Throw out the negatives because anything is possible, especially if you want it bad enough. Chances are, if it doesn't come to pass, it's because of your limiting beliefs. Give up the bad attitude and bring in the good attitude because life has so much waiting for you to just jump in and take off with it. 
Ever heard of, if there is a will, there is a way? Yep, thought so. All right then, let's do it. What are you waiting for? Need ideas? Money issues? <laughs> As a massage tech, I've learned to barter for some things I need or want. What kind of talent do you have that you can barter with? If you feel you don't have any talents, let me help you here. If you can walk a dog, help someone clean their house, go grocery shopping for an elderly person, house it, have computer skills, or you love to dance, etc., you do have something to barter with. So how's that list coming along? Have I helped you eliminate some of those bad attitudes and I don't haves? I hope so. Next step is to look at that list for about five minutes or so and then close your eyes and imagine yourself doing those things. Now really elaborate. Give it color, texture. What does it smell like? Feel like? What kind of sounds do you hear? Be specific and feel the emotions of what it would feel like if you already had it. This is your life. How do you want to create your reality? And you can. For the sake of keeping this video short, I didn't hesitate, but you can always pause after the questions and write down what you love and follow the instructions. And I highly encourage you to do so. So after that process feels complete, then make a separate list. <clears throat> Take your top five ideas and write them down. Next to each one, write out different ways you could set out to accomplish this dream or desire. If money issues pop up, then consider areas in which you can eliminate unnecessary spending or maybe put something less important on the back burner temporarily. And don't forget your barter options. If time issues come up, <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> if time issues come up, think about how much you want to do this. Remember, you are important enough to do this for yourself and for your health. Time is irrelevant. Anyway, because it's a man made concept, and if you get to decide, well, you do. You get to decide what's best for you because this is your life. So, Captain, which way do you choose to steer your ship? Here is an issue, although extremely sad, that unfortunately stops a lot of people from accomplishing their dreams, and that is this thought. But, fill in the blank, doesn't want me to do that. First, whose life is it anyway? Secondly, if it doesn't harm anyone, then why not? If fear is involved, don't let it consume you because what? Because that is part of a slow death, not life. Although some things require you to take precautions and planning, like cliff climbing, that is just common sense, and please use your common sense. I see a lot of people who don't use it, and it has been given to us for a very good reason. Now you have planted the seed of thought and placed it into action. Research your options, nurture your dreams with visualization and positive thoughts, and set forth with the belief that it is already so. Be relaxed in your thoughts and actions. <clears throat> Be careful not to become obsessed with your dreams in a way that creates tension, because that could choke out the natural energy flow that helps to bring the dream into reality. Do not share your precious dreams with anyone unless you know that they will support and encourage you. Too many times a deep desire or dream is shared with someone who does not respect their dreams and by their negative words will smother your fire which will quickly destroy your dream. One more thing. Isn't it time for you to run with the deer? Thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned tomorrow. For Chapter 7, Life is Precious. Until then, Ultrea, move forward with courage and in love. Bye-bye.